Ecamm fam, what's good y'all? This is Marshall Fox and today we're talking about live streaming with the Canon M50 using Ecamm Live's virtual camera feature available for pro members. So if you're new to live streaming or you're planning to make an upgrade soon, this video is for you. We've got a lot to get into, so feel free to jump ahead using the timestamps that you see here. So the Canon M50 is one of the cheapest mirrorless cameras that you can get, but it still holds its weight. In fact, I'm filming both of these angles with an M50 right now. If you're new to the camera scene like I was just a couple months ago, there are two main types of professional cameras. You've got DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. If you want to know the difference between the two, there are tons of videos on YouTube breaking it all down. But what's most important to us live streamers, mirrorless cameras, they're newer, smaller, and lighter than DSLR cameras. You're still getting phenomenal photo and video quality, and there are a lot more mirrorless cameras and lenses available right now than there were just a couple years ago. So the M50 is a great entry-level mirrorless camera and it's a favorite amongst Ecamm users, including myself, because it's plug and play. All you need is a USB cord and you don't need a capture card. Let me say that louder for the people in the back. You don't need a capture card. In fact, if you try to use a capture card, my understanding is you'll still need the Canon utility and you'll still have a hard time getting all that crap off the screen. Ain't nobody got time for that. But what you do need is a micro USB cord. It's a really popular cord and it's actually the same cord that Android users have been using for the past 10 or so years before they switched over to USB-C. So you may already have one laying around the house, but make sure it's a data cable and not just a charging cable. Not all cables are created equal. I had to learn that the hard way. How can you tell? If you had one already, plug in the camera, see if it comes up. If you're ordering one, make sure you type in micro USB data cable. If you have a newer Mac and you decide to use USB-C, look for a USB-C to micro USB cable. One more thing, you'll definitely wanna grab a power adapter with a dummy battery to get continuous power while you're streaming. So put this dummy battery in, close the door completely, move this little rubber door and plug in the adapter. Boom, continuous power. Quick heads up, this next set of tips is a bit more advanced, but it's still useful, especially if you plan on upgrading your lens to something like the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4. And I'll do a lens comparison later on in the video. So out of the box, there are a few settings that need to be changed in order for you to get the best streaming video quality. I'm gonna show you exactly what I did, but just use this as a guide, not gospel. And feel free to continue to tweak and fine tune your own settings to your liking. If you wanna turn off that annoying guided menu, press menu, make sure it's on display level, menu display and change that to standard. You'll definitely want to turn off that feature that turns the screen off every time your hand is over it. So go to menu, make sure it's on the wrench, go to number four, go down to display settings and change display control to manual. Don't make the mistake that I did. Make sure your camera's on video mode, not P mode, not M mode or any of those other modes. Make sure it's on video mode. So if you're brand new to the M50, you've got the kit lens and you're a little intimidated about changing all the settings, go ahead and try it out on auto. It's the default movie mode. Choose manual movie mode, set the camera to record at 30 frames per second. A good rule of thumb is to double your frames per second to get your shutter speed. So go ahead and set it to 1 60th of a second. Now you wanna lower your aperture to as low as it can go. If you're just starting out with the kit lens, it likely won't give you any blurry background, but once you upgrade your lens to something like the 22 millimeter or even the Sigma 16 millimeter, with a low aperture, you'll definitely have that blurry background. Now go ahead and adjust your ISO. You wanna make sure you have a lot of light because you want this to be as low as possible in order to have the least amount of graininess. Aside from the kit lens that comes with the camera, another popular lens is the Canon 22 millimeter F2 and the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4, which you see here. And there are tons of older lenses for Canon DSLRs. They aren't natively compatible, but you can get an adapter that will allow them to work with the M50. When you're ready to upgrade, I highly recommend you grab that Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4. At 400 bucks, it's just about as much as the camera, but it's definitely worth it. And it's a unique lens in that you can have it pretty close to you and still get that great blurry background. It's not as intense as something like the 50 millimeter lens, but that nifty 50 doesn't work in most live stream situations. But if you do have the space, the 50 millimeter may work for you and it's a lot cheaper. So you wanna make sure you're a pro subscriber, then go to the menu, virtual cam, and install the virtual cam. And when you plug in your camera, it should show right up. 
you may have to restart Ecamm or other applications that use your webcam like Zoom, Skype, Loom, Chrome, etc. in order for it to work. And it'll show up in other apps as Ecamm Live Virtual Cam. All right, once you're up and running, go ahead and tweak your picture settings. You can add LUTs if you want to color grade your video. If you want more info about LUTs, definitely check out our LUT video next and you should be good to go. All right guys, as promised, I'm gonna leave you with some test footage comparing the 16 millimeter 1.4 and the kit lens. So for reference, the kit lens is set at about 18 millimeters. It's two feet away from my face and the wall behind me is about seven feet away. Alright y'all, thanks for sticking with me. If you found this video helpful, do us a favor and hit the like button. And let us know in the comments if you use the M50 to stream, how you like it and what settings you recommend. We've got more tutorials in the works just like this one, so make sure you subscribe and ring the bell icon to be notified when they drop. Peace.